Yes, I can hear you. Uh, I don't know if you can hear me or if you can see me. Uh, don't have anyone who can't hear you. Can you hear me? Go ahead. We can hear you. Okay, great. Uh, hello, everybody. Uh, my name is Kathy Zarikoff, and I am a board member of the Morongo Basin Conservation Association. And I'm here tonight on behalf of MBCA and all of our members uh, to thank the Board of Directors of the High Desert Water District for your continued support over the years for our Desert Wise Landscape Tour. This is the 11th year uh, for the tour. And uh, of course the underlying purpose uh, behind it was always to teach and illustrate water conservation, especially involving landscaping. Uh, this year uh, and last year, because of the, uh, the pandemic, we, um, the video, the uh, tour has been videographed and shown online. And uh, we've, we had this year, we are highlighting six different 
residential landscapes uh, from throughout the Morongo Valley, uh, throughout the Morongo Basin. One is in uh, Morongo Valley, uh, Landers, Pioneer Town, 29 Palms, Joshua Tree, and Scott McCone and Kim Money's lovely home uh, is representing Yucca Valley this year. In fact, we have a, a short film clip that I'd like to show you uh, after I'm through. And uh, we've been very uh, excited about the response to our, our video. It went up on um, June the 15th. And since that time, we've had over 5,000 people have viewed the video on YouTube. Uh, if you haven't had a chance to, to see the entire tour, uh, I urge you, you to encourage you to, uh, you can go to our website, mbconservation.org, and, and watch it at, at your leisure. I think you'll be very impressed with the caliber of the uh, professionalism, and especially the message that we give through uh, the illustrations of these various uh, homes and landscapes. You'll see that we put your, your wonderful contribution to us to good use. And uh, again, thank you so much for your support and thank you for your time this evening. If you have any questions or anything uh, regarding the, the tour, I'll be glad to answer that. But otherwise, uh, we have, like I said, we have a short film clip for you. Thank you, go ahead. Some of the bigger stuff, of course, is the mesquite. This one here that we're standing here, probably 
point, if not one of this training in a decade at least. Probably one of the one of the toughest things of starting a garden in the desert is digging the hole for the plants. <laughs> the ground is hard. Obviously, the soil out here. I mean, I don't know if anybody really wants to work that hard with a shovel, so get yourself one of these. Just call a digging bar. Bust up a little bit of that soil. Scoop your hand out. We've got our bucket of water. And let that sit. That will soak in. It goes down a couple inches. When you've done that back down to the dry, get your bar, chip it out some more, and between the digging bar and a little bit of water, you'll get your hole no problem. When I came up here, I was really amazed by the native beauty of our desert. I mean, for me, that's what I love, and I've learned to appreciate the little things, and I really love it about people that are coming to our desert, that they really do appreciate the native beauty. Instead of trying to put in lots of things that won't live, people are looking at, you know, look at the Joshua tree, look at the things that are blooming, that really do have a beauty of their own. So for me, that's what I love about our native desert. There's, uh, there's just something special about the desert. It's a beautiful place to live. That was my wife. Isn't she great? Welcome, Scott. It was a pleasure. Again, thank you, everybody, uh, for your time this evening. I have a quick question. Debbie? Yes? Um, is there any talk about next year yet? Maybe they'll go back to uh, in person? Uh, I couldn't hear you. I Did you ask if what we plan to do next year? I wasn't sure. Yes. Yes. Well, uh, right now we're considering uh, doing a combination depending on, you know, how COVID is uh, doing a combination of both the video and in live in person like we used to uh, all the previous years. So, uh, but we've had such a tremendous outreach from the video uh, reaching many more people than we were able to do uh, in person. So. I think we'll, it'll be part of our, the video will be par, probably a part of the uh, ongoing tours in the future. Any other questions, comments? Thank you very much, Ms. Zarafa. Thank you so much. Thank you all for, for your time. Appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go on with the number Four I, which is department action items. Five is a proposal to provide as needed engineering services presented by our general manager, Paul Pichel. Cody, if you could bring up a uh, spreadsheet. Uh, okay. So I'm going to try to go through this as concisely as I can to summarize things for the board. There's been a lot of dynamics occurring. Um, in fact, we had a meeting this morning, uh, it was an extensive meeting uh, talking about uh, projects, projects funding, timing, potential assessments and things of that nature, and there's a lot of interacting parts here. So in part what I'm going to go over is influenced by, by that. Um, so Taking a bit of a step, step back here, it's a little tough to read, but um, I get to it, I'll try to point the items out. So, at the last board meeting, the need for a rush item was mentioned that it would be presented at the next board meeting. As I say. So, 
So the reason uh, for the rush uh, item was to meet grant application deadline requirements. And as I mentioned, this is still evolving and it's all something that we didn't get this morning. Uh, with that noted, staff uh, issued a request for qualifications, the RFQ, which I mentioned we would be sending out, and that was sometime on August 12th. And <clears throat> that was for the purpose of having readily available pre qualified consultants under contract. So, uh, two schedules were provided one to meet the rush near term grant application support needs, and the other to meet longer term. So as noted, the purpose of this board item is to meet the rush near-term consulting grant application support needs, selecting from the consultants submitted by August 12th to August 12th deadline. <clears throat> After the September proposal deadline, when additional proposals are received, staff will return to the board for the board to consider entering into contract with consultants for longer-term needs. The board may decide to enter into contract with none, some or all of the consultants. <clears throat> when you look at the RFP, it is written to allow for a five-year agreement with the option to renew for three additional one-year, uh, one million dollar terms. So the not to see, exceed for five years is five million and through eight years is eight million. But I do want to make it clear that in the agreement, these terms do not guarantee any work and they do not approve any expenditures. They simply set a cap on the amount of potential work if approved by the board. Um, and I went through a lot of stuff last week, but I, I mentioned that we'd come back for each item to the board. So because the intent of the RFP was to screen for and have readily available qualified consultants, this cap could have been left off placing a limit on the amounts for a particular consultant seemed approved. With that in mind, these limits do not allow staff to hire any consultants for any, for any work. As mentioned in our last board meeting, once the board approves qualified consultants, staff will return to the board when funding for an activity is required and supportable, and staff will provide the board options and suggestions for engaging one or more of the pre screened consultants for, for a specific task order or specific task orders limited to the funding determined available and supportable and further limited by the amount approved by the board. This board item includes the need as mentioned to fund specific grant application consulting support services. We're still working through the details and timing. Uh, we did meet with state staff and they initially indicated we should apply under the Proposition 1 Groundwater Grant Program with a September 7th application deadline. After further review and consideration late, late last week, state staff indicated that we should instead apply under the Drinking Water State Revolving Fund Program. Our understanding is that there is no time limit to this program, but it is first come, first served, so the sooner we get our applications in, the better. And so it could run out even sooner if we don't get our applications in. The advantage to this program is that the entire project can be funded 100% due to our disadvantaged status and sewer service population under 20,000, but as noted, funding is limited. We also asked about applying under the other program, and they said it's not appropriate, so they basically excluded us from that. Didn't quite make sense to me, but that's what they said. So the, the RFP listed nine projects that was on page uh, one of the RFP under scope of services. services. Uh, that we felt might require consulting grant funding support. After further review, the list of grant application rush projects was reduced to seven. And all fall under that PWSR program that the uh, state had mentioned. <clears throat> now, referring to the projects, the plans for project three, um, and I can't read them here, but that's the first one on the list. And I was trying to print mine out before I came here, but I couldn't get it to print properly. Anyway, that's, well, thank you. That, that project is the uh, uh, capital replacement uh, program. Uh, the plans for that project have been completed for some time. So the only thing that's required for that is to have some communication between the consultants uh, and, the, uh, and the grant writer. So that really isn't part of this request because that's a minor amount of effort we have some small agreements that that can be taken care of. Um, so six remain to be coordinated between the consultants and the grant writer for the purposes of this. So those fall under uh, those that fall under the request are eight, which is right here. That's phase two of the wastewater.
Phase two sewer mainline installation uh, deferred would probably easy because there's some that are more straightforward and are really appear to be ready to go. Item six, boost the booster station rehabilitation. Um, and one, which is the extraction well at the wastewater plant, and uh, that that one's kind of iffy, but and and five. So uh, I did want to mention the project, and I was mentioning project one, which is the uh, extraction well. That may put, be pushed to a later date due to the effort required. We were discussing that this morning, and there, it may be more effort than we can get it done within prior to when we can get other consultants on board. But the sooner we can get it, the better, because otherwise we might lose that opportunity. So we're working through the details. Uh, projects 8, 9, and 2A all deal with phase two of the project. They're of a similar nature, so it may make sense to group those together projects under one consultant. And as we work through the details, how projects are packaged may be key. Uh, and there's different elements that come into play, such as how that might affect assessment and things of that nature. We're still working through some of those details. Now that's later on. I'm just mentioning that as, as a general comment. Um, but it, it, well, let, let, me, let me restate that. There is some importance now because Depending on how we package it may affect our assessment and how we get the grants. So we're working through those details. We're going to have some further meetings on that. So exactly how we're going to write some of those could be key. And to give you an example, and we had quite a thorough discussion on this, if we go out and get 100% grants and we uh, earmark it for a certain area, then we may be at risk of not uh, having the large, having that group of Parcel owners want to support funding, uh, moving the assessment. The other thing that we might have a concern with is, uh, depending on how the state looks is at the equitable pay, that might be another concern. Didn't really get full and uh, complete answers to that, so we just need to make sure we approach it properly. Really, the only reason I'm bringing this up is because the details have yet to be worked out on the best approach for the application to make sure that we can handle for a later assessment appropriately and so that we're also maximizing funding. So we're going to be very careful with that. that that's the whole reason for the mention. We want to make sure that we nail down uh, those items. Um, and so I just said. Uh, Thus, we may apply for funds for a portion this year and other portions the following year. So that may be another thing to, to maximize funding. There are a number of items uh, to consider in that decision, as I mentioned. Uh, also, uh, as we learn the details of other grant opportunities, we may be, need to use one or both of the consultants if we do not have time to wait to engage consultants after September 15th. There may also be other grant opportunities that we're pursuing that would come up that need to be done quickly. Um, so we're trying to push a lot now so we can uh, maximize our opportunities. So I just threw a lot of you. So after, here, here's my recommendation the board can digest this and ask questions. But that the board approve staff to enter into as needed agreements to fill support service to help me near-term grant deadline application requirements. To avoid potential confusion, it is recommended that this request be limited to an approval amount of $100,000. <coughs> this is asking for a specific approval amount for a specific task order through the end of the year only. And we won't have to go to a longer-term agreement. So the, the idea would be that when we get the rest of the applications in, then we look at those longer-term agreements, we'll pull both application package together just do that limited 100000 to the end of the year. Uh, we further recommend that the board approve agreements with both consultants and allow staff the discretion to determine which projects each consultant will provide grant, uh, will provide grant support for. For some projects, it may be advantage to, advantageous to have both consultants involved. And one of the things there is this is so dynamic, we're still working through the details. And 
So that's that's my thoughts. I kind of threw everything at you up front, but uh, any questions, we can take it from there. I apologize for all that information, but this has been really dynamic. Are there any emails or public kind of calls that anyone would like to speak, question, comment? We're seeing no emails. Is there anybody online that would like to speak at this time? I don't hear any, so I'll bring it back to the board, Director Stater. Yes, so thank you, Mr. President. Uh, maybe it's a sign up in here too long, but that actually made sense. <laughs> <laughs> well, I haven't had any sense to somebody. <laughs> you know, it sounded like it was more complex than it really was. And it seems like that uh, what we're after is some flexibility to take advantage of some short-term uh, grant of possibilities. And we might need, uh, I just actually had one question on the 100,000 for between two consultants, uh, would be a not to exceed amount, correct? I'm gonna run I'm, I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't even come close to that. Yeah. But right now, it, it's so dynamic trying to figure out how much support is needed and how far we need to get with some of these plans to show that we're shovel ready, and shovel ready really varies. Maybe, maybe uh, enough of a concept showing that we're going to get CEQA done to having like 30 percent level plans. So that's where some of the unknown comes in. Um, and the other thing I'd say is, let's say we find that if we just don't have the resources to get something done, and we may not be able to get it as soon as we'd like. We can wait until we get more consultants on to get help because we're, we're talking getting uh, what was it six uh, applications ready and that could be for multiple or six projects ready for potentially multiple grants. That's going to be a lot of work. We spent money in the past looking for grant funding and had some criticism about it early on, but uh, when it was able to produce several million of dollars worth of grant funding, the criticism dried up rather quickly. And so I'm rather hopeful that uh, this will be another situation like that where uh, we can spend a relatively modest amount of money. That was a sort of a long-winded yes on the not to exceed 100000 for now. And the board can always choose to go with less. Um, and then if for some reason we're bumping it, we call a special board meeting and say, here's what we did, and we haven't gotten any more. I mean, so for now, yeah. uh, if you don't feel, I'm, well, it sounds like you feel comfortable with it. I just want to make sure. Well, I'm, I'm, I'm quite comfortable. I just wanted to clarify that we're not necessarily committed to spending the entire $100,000. It's not a contract for $100,000. No, no. That, that's not to it's the, the as, as needed consulting services. I'm, I'm hoping it doesn't come even not, not as we said it either. With the aim of providing the, the core documentation to get us near the top of the line for grant funding. And so I'm quite in favor of going down this road and seeing if we can't get additional grant funding. I, congratulations to staff for putting something together like this, and I'm cautiously optimistic that it's going to work. Create one, maybe not necessarily everything, but something. That's all I think. Vice President Hatt. Cody, is this, is this online? This doctor, can I get it? It was just added this evening, but it will be online uh, by tomorrow morning for transfer. Uh, you know, for me, looking at this, it's kind of fun. It's kind of like beginning to start, beginning to start uh, phase one of the sewer. It's nice to, we kind of settled there for a little while. It's nice to get going again. And I uh, think this is, this is a, whoever put this together, the staff, and I think you did know, a really nice job on this. Really, that's why I got online to be able to really look at it. It's a little bit little for my eyes. But, uh, I, I can get through it if I put it out here. So this is very, very nice. Thank you. Combined staff effort, so I, 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 I commend them for uh, putting this together. And I will say this is a microcosm of what will hopefully come later.
the West Coast is providing engineering services, but they don't necessarily talk about grant writing. And the Corolla proposals or uh, qualifications, they actually have grant writers on staff and they have the engineering support to go along with it. Are you planning to use Corolla for grant writing services? We may. Um, and is that included in the 100000 Well, I, I have to say that if the 100000 was a, a best estimate uh, based on what we know, as I was trying to pull that number out of some discussion. So <clears throat> what we're going to do is try to work within that. I'm hoping it doesn't even come close to that. But uh, uh, once we get a better handle on what the needs are, the demands, and all the timelines which we're working on, that uh, hopefully by the end of the day tomorrow we're going to have some more details on the spreadsheet that we're working with internally. And then, <clears throat> depending on the board's decision tonight, we'll be able to bring the groups together and conquer and divide on this. So that's a definite need. Yes. I, I, I don't, I don't, it, we need to look at a lot of things. Understand. We plan on leveraging them as best we can with your skill sets. And the RFQ called for a second round of uh, engineering firms to uh, sit in their SOQs on uh, September, middle of September sometime. Correct. So we could be getting another group of them coming back to us for approval. And so, so what you're asking for tonight is hundred thousand dollars to support the grants. You're asking for authorization to use West Coast and Corolla as needed. And in September, you may be coming back to us at the second meeting saying, here's another group that we want to propose as well. Yes, the, the idea of that is to, if we believe they're qualified, to enter into a contract. It doesn't guarantee any work. But if something comes up we, because we've determined they're pre-qualified, we could come back to the board. That may be for writing your grant, it may be for doing design, it may be project management, construction management, it all depends on. And this right here is probably uh, in itself a multi year program. So, five year term is what we're looking at. If you get the money, tell me you can build it in one year. <laughs> Depending on what it is, it could be. <laughs> so, the five million potentially $8 million figures that you threw out are for information only. We're not discussing, we're not approving anything like that tonight. That, that is not an approval amount. That was simply a cap. So let, let's say we came back a number of times and we, there were other projects that came up and we hired and we came back to the board and after time and accumulated to, let's look at the five year period, and accumulated to five year. That, that simply means that we couldn't use them anymore. We'd have to use somebody else. That's all that is. It is no approval for spending any money. It's a cap on how much we can come back for later total approval for the board. Okay, thank you. Director McCall? Yeah, Director Byron, thank you, Mr. President. Just kind of hit on something that I was looking at as well. <clears throat> on page 25, staff is seeking the board to review all submitted proposals. Elected consultant to assist the district to getting grant funding. So I just want to get clarification for sure. Um, page 29, deadlines, second paragraph. The district anticipates a five year agreement with the option to renew um, a not to exceed amount of the contract, $5 million. So tonight we're not talking about that, correct? It's just what I was recommending to. We're not, and I recommended the 100000 to the end of the year to eliminate any potential confusion. Even if it was approved that way, that's kind of meaningless in the sense of the amount. The only amount you're approving would be the 100000 not that. Um, the, the other thing that I think would be good to do here is this is just for the grant funding. So thinking about it a little bit more, we're going to just pull the entire group after all of this that has come in, and then we'll look for those longer term contracts with, again, how many, uh, and include these two also, because they've already submitted for that longer term as part of this. And any additional, we'll come back to the board and they can decide none, some, or all. So we'll come back to that this evening then it's just to assist with grant funding. To just the grant funding, it just limited to 100000 to the end of the year. I just wanted to refer to that. 
I would just like to remind people when they look at this, these figures, they are estimates. They are not black and white, and you can't uh, hold the district to it. Those are estimates that they're going to work from. They may be in the ballpark, and as we zero in closer, it may be a little bit higher, it may be a little bit lower. So don't throw stones uh, until there's actually something that's really concrete here. We, we uh, have gone through the phase one of the sewer plant, and there was a lot of stuff that, and lots of rumors that was going around. Please be careful. If you have questions, call the staff. Talk to our general manager about that. That is very, very important because he has the answers and the other staff as well has the answers. Um, I uh, appreciate what you're doing because it's visionary and it's, uh, you see that there are potential of funds that are out there and that their uh, deadlines are coming up and you're trying to get ahead of the, the uh, curve. So I appreciate that and uh, I think that's a very uh, good leadership on your part. So I thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. We couldn't do any of it without the staff support. So. Okay. Is there uh, a motion or a second? Move staff recommendation. Second. It's been moved by Director Stephen and seconded by Vice President Huff. Uh, roll call, please. Director Byron? Yes. Director McCall? Yes. President Amin? Yes. Vice President Hoff? Yes. Director Stan? Yes. Okay, motion carried. Let's go on to number six. The director's report and comments for information purposes only on subjects not covered by the agenda and no action to be taken. Director McComb? Uh, yeah. uh, before we move on, I just need a little more clarification. What exactly? Okay. If we Mr. 
to climate. And I'd like to say that I, I have understood that fossil fuels are not a renewable resource. Sooner or later, they're going to run out. And so coming up with a game plan to uh, sort of phase out of fossil fuels is reasonably sensible. I have been a fan of solar for probably going on 40 years. I put my first solar system in in the, in the late 70s. I have solar on my house now. And uh, the less people uh, downwind, upwind from us, uh, emit pollutions into the air, then the less air pollution uh, moves this way. There's 12 million people uh, on the upwind side of us, and you can get up early in the morning or late at night and, and look at the horizon and see that while the air is significantly cleaner than it was in the mid-60s, I remember driving around Los Angeles in the mid-60s, and oh my gosh, there were smog days you couldn't believe, and that was half the population we have today. So, that being said, it has concerned me that um, the state of California, in particular, passed SB 100 uh, a couple of years back and are on a, a fast track to eliminate all fossil fuels within a very short number of years, and they're using uh, climate alarmism, which has a misinformation, uh, of frightening people, and trying to herd them to this one-size-fits-all solution which has kind of disturbed me a little bit. And when I first came across this book by essentially a Democrat, right, um, I wasn't so sure. And then I'm reading in it, and if I may, uh, it is clear that media, politicians, and often the assessment reports themselves blatantly misrepresent what the science says about climate and catastrophes. Those failures invite the scientists who write and too casually review the reports, the reporters who uncritically repeat them, the editors who allow that to happen, the activists and their organizations who fan the fires of alarm, and the experts whose public silence endorses the deception. Constant repetition of these and many other climate fallacies turns them into accepted truths. I am convinced now, and it took me a long time. I argued with my dentist for I don't remember how many years uh, when he tried to tell me that uh, uh, the IPCC, the Intercontinental Panel, uh, on uh, climate change, somehow these international scientists, they were all wrong, and my local dentist was, was right. It took me quite some time. You're asking, well, what 97%? Show me the 97%. That's kind of what got me started into looking into this. And one thing leads to another, and that has led to Unsettled, where even people in the... Uh, Obama administration are going, hey, wait a minute. And the reason I bring this up is because our water district and all water districts, and special districts within the state of California, are going to have to make some very fast, probably very expensive adjustments, and it's going to cost a lot of money. And at the end of the day, uh, there's no really good scientific evidence that we're going to slow things down at all. I noticed that uh, uh, China has opted out of any commitment to do anything other than build more coal fired power plants, which they are doing. Uh, so we'll see. It's going to warm up. I mean, it's been warming up for the last 10,000 years, and we need to accommodate that. And I think humans are really good at accommodating that sort of thing. But doing so would miss. Basically, with lies. Uh, there's something, you know, I'm held to a standard of, of honesty uh, as a public official. How come that the state, they're not 
top of it. Um, a lot of problems still with uh, cannabis and more research to be done. The we need a solution. Looks like the uh, county is stepping up and they've got uh, four or five police task force now looking to do something about the rampant use of water theft and pollution from illegal marijuana growers. Anyway, on uh, August 11th, I attended the Morongo Basin Pipeline Commission meeting. Uh, we had a great uh, presentation, again, by their uh, maintenance and operations manager, Mike, and talked about the R&R uh, &R work that was done on the uh, tank. What, what do you call that, the, the big tank up there? The Mesa, the five million gallon yeah, tank reservoir is all I that's that's their reservoir. So. Right. Well, well anyway, it got it got cleaned out, and uh, the pictures of them lowering a bobcat through the roof in pieces at the assembly, and so they could clean it out was quite something, and they're going to look into seeing if they can't get a vacuum bumper or bigger accents uh, to make it a little easier to do. They only have to do it under five years or so. Um, update on the state water project, water, 5% still, drought, looking pretty tough for some communities. We are uh, blessed here, really, with uh, foresight and planning and groundwater reserves, so we should be able to get through um, Another year or two of drought, if need be, without that much of a problem. Then uh, on the 13th of this month, I attended the uh, annual BIA, the Building Industry Association of Southern California's uh, Water Conference. It was <coughs> actually a surprisingly good uh, presentation. It went along fairly quickly. There was four uh, panels. Um, Don Rao gave the, some introductory remarks, and uh, Jennifer Pierre, who's the general manager of the state water contractors, uh, talked about the importance of Delta conveyance and the state water project is not sustainable without it. And really, it was putting in a lobby effort for, you know, make sure everybody on board for you know, it might be smaller and only one tunnel, but it's better, way better than nothing, was, was that message. Um, talk on water efficiency, using water budgets more, smart meters. How far along are we on smart meters? We're about uh, almost three quarters done with smart meters. Nice, nice. Anyway, it was a very good uh, presentation, I thought. And then finally, um, this uh, last Monday on the 16th, I attended the Association of San Bernardino County Special Districts uh, back to regular monthly meetings again. And the general manager of um, SBVM 
on Zoom somewhere? Or he was? I don't think he's online anymore. He's not online anymore. He's not online. Okay, let's go on to the general manager of the administration, Jonathan Abadesco. I don't have anything to report. Our board secretary, Cody Mintz. No report, thank you. And assistant general manager of operations, Tony Cooper. Good evening. Uh, just, a, just a note on the uh, grant writing. I know uh, Sean and Kyle both have been successful at writing grants also, but you know, they didn't put in the proposal of the next time they should. But uh, also they're teamed up with Jacobs, and uh, I know they have, they're uh, very good at getting grants too. So. Okay. Uh, Ms. Uh, Tanya Gruel. Mr. Ryan Hutchins. Uh, anyone from Western Civil? Nothing from West Coast Civil. West Coast Civil, I'm sorry. I got it close, but that doesn't make any difference except for horseshoes. Uh, General Manager Paul Pichel. I, I have the three items briefly. Um, if the board could get back to me on uh, some training items for sexual harassment and ethics training. I'll coordinate with Amelia to make sure everybody's up to speed on that. Um, there's different options. Uh, I'd be generally inclined to go with the no-cost option if possible, but uh, obviously the uh, discussion's up to the board. So just wanted to remind you of that. Paul? Yes. Uh, you know, it's easier. Uh, yeah, I would prefer in-house, but we kind of do. I need a little bit heads up from patient schedule. Uh, okay, we're, uh, I'll work with the... Uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, yeah. Now, when you say in house, yeah, you like to have somebody physically here to do the training, or yes, okay, okay, it's just easier. And both, and both of the courses too. Both, both what are we doing one day? That'd be great. Um, okay, we've got it before. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Um, I'll, uh, I'll I'll get with Amelia and make sure we work out the details with the board members. Um. Yesterday, it seems like four days ago already or so, but maybe last week, I had a brief tour of the Marine Base. Uh, Christina Brown, here, did, okay, well, it was through Aaron Adams, a supervisor. It was with Mike King and Chris Elliott. Chris Elliott is an expert on their <clears throat> bar resources, their uh, bar supply, and uh, wastewater treatment. And uh, one thing they, they haven't finished, but they uh, gave, gave me a tour of was their reverse osmosis plant, and they haven't put that in place because of getting additional water supplies, they've got a number of work with water supplies, and they, they uh, are installing what's called a closed circuit desalinization system, so they're expecting to get 90% production and only 10% waste out of that. I thought that was pretty interesting. Now, uh, Christina did offer to give another tour, a group tour, of the base that would be more of a training and combat tour. So if any of the board members are interested in a tour, they, they said they could take up to like 16 people on a tour of the base. So if anybody's interested in this tour of the base, let me know and we can see about coordinating that. Um, this, I also meet with them uh, maybe once a month or every two weeks we have a group of managers that can get together. So that's how I initially uh, um, one other thing I want to mention here, if I can remember what my note was. Oh, I, I was just going to re reiterate that we, we did have an extensive meeting today regarding the projects, the funding, the timing, and the, the, the assessment. And, and I kind of mentioned this already, but there's a lot of dynamics in, in play there. and. Uh, we do have to be very careful in how we approach things with regard to uh, not affecting the assessment later on. But I think we're because we're aware of it, we can avoid uh, potential problems. But it may limit its inner flexibility. So I just wanted to reiterate that. Thank you, thank you. Any other comments, questions? Outstanding. Let's go on to number eight, upcoming agenda items. Are there any? I don't see any, so we'll call the meeting adjourned at 5.58. Thank you for coming, and have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the month.